Hi, my name is Aaron and this is Kevin, and we're both ADEC Territory Managers in Oregon and Southwest Washington. Today we're going to go over a few key components as it pertains to ergonomics. Particularly, we're going to go over proper patient seating, proper use of the double articulating headrest, and operator seating. So now what we're going to do is demonstrate the proper way for the patient to be introduced into the chair. What we want to do is we want to make sure that the glide bar, the headrest, and this big metal part is called the glide bar, is lifted up out of the back of the chair. We don't ever want to leave this all the way pushed down. We want to lift this up out of the back of the chair. The headrest also has a secondary slide. That's going to be this portion here. So it's also important to make sure that we don't lift just that part up out of the back of the chair. We want to get the glide bar out and we want to have this part of the headrest lifted up maybe just a little bit, just about a third of its range of motion. And by that, I mean it can go all the way up that tall, all the way down here. We want to lift it up to just about there. So I'm going to leave that here and then I'm going to bring the headrest using the lever forward. Okay, just like this. I don't want to leave this flat. I want to bring this forward. And then I'm going to take the armrest and I'm going to push it all the way forward. What we're trying to do here is to encourage the patient to sit here at this part of the chair. The way that this upholstery set was designed is very purposeful. And it's important that the patient is seated with their back all the way against the backrest to take advantage of all the lumbar support, and to take advantage of where the knee break is, and also to allow you to properly adjust the double articulated headrest. So with that, I'm gonna have Kevin come back on screen and sit in the chair the way that it was designed to do. Now, you'll notice how his feet was square on the ground in this cutout. You can see how his feet, they're right at the edge of the chair, but they're certainly not dangling over. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this armrest down and give his basically his forearms on down a place to rest. Technically, your patient's arms are going to be supported by the backrest when they're seated properly in the chair. Now you'll notice what I also did is I lifted the glide bar up out of the back of the chair to get the top of the headrest roughly in line with his occipital bone. So now that we have the patient seated, the headrest is pushed forward as you can see here with this V. Go ahead and lift your head up a little bit. I just wanna again show the incorrect way of adjusting the headrest. The incorrect way would be basically not adjusting it, right? It would be if it's completely flat like this. We want to make sure that we bring it forward to the patient. The reason why we wanna do that is because we wanna have a space for our hand to be cradled when we take them into a supine position so that when we engage the lever mechanism, we can support the weight of their head, right? If this is completely flat and we take them to a supine position and try to adjust it, it's pretty much impossible. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take Kevin into a supine position and I'm going to basically show the correct way to do the secondary adjustment on the headrest. So this is really the key component here as well. You'll notice how his chin is pointed down. It's gonna be a little bit difficult for him to open. What we want to be able to do now is we want to get his maxillary roughly perpendicular to the floor. And the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to put my hand right here. I'm going to take the meaty part of my palm so that I can engage that lever. So I've just engaged the lever and all I'm going to do is I'm going to push the glide bar into the back of the chair ever so slightly as I tilt the headrest back, just like that. So now his maxillary is perpendicular to the floor. It's going to be much easier for him to, to open. And when I take him base down and work around the patient, we're going to have much more room to work around the patient because we're now working around the narrowest part of the chair as opposed to the widest part of the chair. The widest part of the chair would mean that we never lifted that bayonet out of the back of the dental chair, forcing everybody to, in the, on the dental team to work downstream. So now we're going to talk about operator seating. It's important that whatever stool that the operator is using can put the user into a neutral balance position. A neutral balance position is one that's going to put the least amount of stress on the joints and on the spine, and it's also going to allow for better circulation to the feet and to other extremities. So a good stool 
should be able to have a backrest that adjusts. So I'm going to lift this backrest up and it should also be able to adjust to come to the user's back. This is important because if you have a smaller user who maybe can only take up this much of the seating surface, if you have a backrest that can adjust far enough, you can see how far, far forward this backrest can come. So the next thing that I'm going to do with the stool is I'm going to adjust the height of it. I want to make sure that my hips are slightly above my knees. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the seat pan forward just a little bit. The reason why is if I'm going to sit in a neutral balanced posture, meaning having a nice S-shaped spine, it's going to be very difficult for me to maintain that for long periods of time if my seat pan is parallel to the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tilt it forward ever so slightly. And what that did is essentially rolled my hips forward and it shifted my weight from my core to my larger muscle groups, which makes it much easier to hold that neutral balance posture for long periods of time with minimal energy expenditure. So the last thing that I'm going to do, and the whole time that I'm adjusting this as I'm exaggerating good posture, is I'm going to bring this, the backrest to my back. So I'm gonna lift this lever that you can't see, but I'm gonna bring it forward to provide me back support. So now I'm essentially pushing up off the ground with the balls of my feet. I can feel my leg muscles engaged, which is allowing me to hold this posture far easier than it would be if I were using just my core. So reviewing just a few, for a few moments, I like to think of this in terms of some posture checkpoints. We wanna start from the, the ground and we wanna work our way up. So we're gonna start with our feet parallel to the ground. We wanna make sure that our knees are above our ankles. We wanna make sure that our hips are slightly above our knees. We wanna make sure that our shoulders are above our hips and that the crown of our head is above our shoulders. And if I can do that and work high around the dental chair, I'm gonna be sitting in an optimal ergonomic position. The patient should be comfortable if they've been appropriately seated in the chair and if the headrest has been adjusted properly. And for the most part, you should be able to take complete advantage of all the ergonomic advantages of this chair with regards to both patient comfort and allowing the dental team to have better access and vision to the patient. So today we have covered proper patient seating using the double articulating headrest and proper operator positioning.